Liz, I'm the beggar that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups and we are on episode 34. Always have to glance down and check the number. But yes, welcome back. I'm going to be sharing all things sewing related. So I've got some things that I've been sewing. I've got a couple of patterns to share with you. Uh, some sewing plans, I've got some fabric that I've been buying, um, so a whole range of things that I wanted to share with you today. Um, I'll start with what I'm wearing and actually on the bottom half is something that I have got sewn up um, over the last week and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get it sewn up in time. Um, so I talked about this plan in the Sew Frugal 22 video that came out on Monday um, and I was considering sewing up this pattern as my Sew Frugal um, entry. I've actually used it as my Sew Yellow for Endo entry um, and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to take part in that challenge because there's three great challenges over on Instagram um, running in the month of March. The first one is the Sew Yellow for Endo. We've also got the Sew Frugal 22 and then there's also Sew Recreate the Look. Now I am halfway through sewing up my Sew Recreate the Look project and I'm gonna talk about that today. And my Sew Frugal, I haven't started yet but I've got two patterns that I've um, stuck together and I'm hoping that I can get at least one of them sewn up, fingers crossed. But I got my Sew Yellow for Endo sewn up last night and I've managed to post it over on my grid today so I can share it in this video. I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like, but I am wearing the Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt on top, um, made in this um, loop back fabric, loop back sweatshirting fabric from Hayso Sister. I got it in this gorgeous lilac colourway, and then I've also got it in like a pistachio green colourway too, and I just made two plain t-shirts. I sized up because I wanted it to be quite oversized so I could tuck it into things and have quite a blousy look for my t-shirt and that's what I've done today and then I've got it on with my little pomegranate Sabina skirt which is a free pattern I'll link it down below so you can go and check it out and if you haven't watched my Sew Frugal 22 vlog I'm going to be sharing some of those patterns today and um, the free patterns um, and I used a poly viscose I think it was a viscose crepe fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics which is like a bright neon fabric and it's got blush pink sort of pattern all over it and I've paired the two together and on the photo, which I'll insert now, I've also put on my lilac Sorrento jacket made in some lilac um, denim fabric that I got from Fast for Fabrics. So I'll stand up. You can see I've just got the T-shirt tucked in. Um, so it just creates this sort of blousy effect all the way around. Um, this is the skirt. It's got gorgeous slanted pockets, quite roomy pockets as well. Um, it's elasticated all the way around. And if I stand up, you'll be able to see it's like a midi length skirt. And it's got this gorgeous ruffle on the bottom and the ruffle goes all the way around. It's a bit tricky to show you um, the length on me when I stand up, but I'll put pictures in so you can see what the length looks like. In the photos, I had bare legs, but it's actually really cold today. So I've ended up putting tights on underneath. Um, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out and I'm really pleased that I was able to take part in the So Yellow for Endo um, challenge that was over on Instagram because the lovely Jess, so What If I Sew has been raising awareness of endometriosis this month. She's been doing lots of things over on Instagram. She's written some blog posts as well, so I'll link her blog down below. Um, and just raising awareness for endometriosis, um, sharing sort of symptoms and um, what to expect in terms of care. So as part of the challenge, we're encouraged to post um, a yellow garment that we've sewn up in March. Um, and then within our sort of um, description to go with the um, photo that you share, we're encouraged to share a fact or something that we're taking away from Endometriosis Awareness Month. And my takeaway is to just continue being an advocate for my children. Um, it's frustrating to hear that it's still taking a really long time for women to get diagnosed with endometriosis and actually the care differs dependent on where you are in the country. Um, so it was just a reminder really to continue being an advocate for my children um, and just to make sure that they are really in tune with their bodies and if there's any changes or anything that doesn't feel right that we go and get some medical advice um, and keep going back if we're being told there's nothing wrong. Um, so thank you Jess for another um, So Yellow for Endo Raising Awareness of Endometriosis Month. It's been really informative um, so thank you for all of the hard work that you've put in for the challenge. So I'm really pleased that I got that sewn up. And then I have been beavering away at my So Recreate the Look um, sort of outfit. Um, I've made it a bit trickier for myself because there's three things that I want to sew up that are gonna go together to create the look. And I was inspired by a Lucy and Yak 
image of some dungarees, a white blouse, and then um, a jacket over the top. So I've sewn up the dungarees. I'm halfway through sewing up the blouse. I haven't started the jacket, but I know it's quite a straightforward jacket, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get that sewn up, even if I don't get the buttons and the buttonholes done on the jacket. I want it to be like a jacket, so I don't want it to close anyway, so I could do the buttons and the buttonholes at a later date. Let me show you what I've done so far. I haven't actually got photos of this yet, um, because I want to get photos when I've completed the blouse and the jacket. Um, but I used my trusty favourite dungaree pattern, which is the Helen's Closet Yanta overalls. And I used this brushed cotton fabric that I got from Abacan Fabrics as part of my work with them as an Abacan ambassador. So I've sewn up some overalls and I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. I think they're really cute and they're going to um, go really nicely with the white shirt. So I always finish the Yantas with buckles instead of a button. Um, and then I've just done the full length overalls. They've got patch pockets on the front, they've got the bib pocket here, and then they've got patch pockets on the back of them. And this was a similar sort of fabric um, to the Lucy and Yak dungarees that I was inspired by. It was the closest that I could get, but actually the Fabric Revival have got some Lucy and Yak dead stock fabrics, um, which I'll link down below. And I bought two of them. I bought a gorgeous like floral denim, and then I bought a green um, corduroy fabric that's got daisies all over it but then they also had the same fabric that the Lucy and Yak dungarees were made in um but I already had this fabric and I'd already cut it out so I'm actually still going to stick with this for my so recreate the look but I may go back and get some of that gorgeous fabric from the fabric revival so my dungarees are completely finished and then this is as far as I've got with my blouse. Um, I asked for help and advice on which blouse pattern to go for. And I was asking whether I should go for the By Hand London Marie blouse. I'll put a picture in of what it looks like. Or the Ninley Bakerloo blouse. Um, and I've actually gone for, although I really wanted to try the Marie shirt, I've gone for the Bakerloo blouse. Purely because... Bakerloo blouse is a blouse pattern that I've sewn up quite a few times before. Um, I know how it fits on me. I know how it looks. And because I've sewn it up quite a few times before, I feel quite confident sewing it up in a couple of hours. So this is as far as I've got. I've got the collar on and you can see that gorgeous ruffle. I'm a little bit nervous about wearing white, I'll be honest, because I'm so messy and clumsy. But I'm really pleased with how that collar is looking in that white fabric. I just need to give it a really good press. And then obviously I've got the back as well. I've got the rouleau loop. Um, and then you've got that lovely keyhole opening. So I need to sew the sleeves and insert those. I need to attach a button. And then I also, because the neckline is still raw, you can see it's all frayed. I need to finish the neckline with bias binding. And then I need to hem it. And then the blouse is completely finished. And I think that is going to look absolutely gorgeous with these dungarees if I hold them up. I think they're going to go so beautifully together. I think it's just going to give ooh, a really lovely look. And then with that gorgeous cuff detail on the blouse as well. And then I've still got my fabric for my Ilford jacket. Haven't cut it out yet, but that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. So I'm hoping across the week next week, I've still got work for a week and then it's these holidays. But I'm hoping I'll get a little bit of time um, across the week to sew up the um, Ilford jacket. And then I'll have my completed um so recreate the look outfit. I might not get them finished in time for the reveal day, but if I don't, I'll just share them a few days later. There's been so many challenges that I've wanted to take part in, but I also need to be realistic that, you know, I was poorly um, and COVID really floored me for a couple of weeks. I'm only just feeling like I've got my energy levels sort of starting to come back. Um, and then obviously I've been working as well. So I do need to remind myself that sometimes you can't take part in everything. Um, so that's what I've been sewing up for, the, for that So Recreate the Look. And then I had talked about turning this canvas fabric, which again is from Abacan Fabrics as part of my work with them. I was originally going to turn it into um, the Nutmeg Trench Coat, which is a Kokowawa Crafts pattern. I'll put a picture in of what it looks like. Um, when I was sewing up the Yanta overalls in the floral brushed cotton, I felt quite inspired to sew these up. And actually, I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. So I've turned these into Yanta overalls as well. And I think these will be perfect for the springtime. And actually, there's little rabbits all over them. So I think it could be a really cute Easter outfit as well. So this is what they look like. I've already got pictures of me wearing these, so I can um, insert pictures in a minute. Um, but yeah, this is what the Yanta overalls look like. I've got the bib pocket. The patch pockets on the front is such a busy fabric that you can't really see the pockets. And then on the back, I've got the pockets as well. 
full length Yanta overalls and actually for this pair I did add an extra inch on the bottom uh, just for a little bit of extra length and I can always roll them up if I want to um, but I'm really pleased with how these have turned out I think this makes a gorgeous pair of Yanta overalls and the canvas works really well for Yanta overalls as well so I'm really pleased with those ones unexpected make for the week I wasn't planning to sew those up and then the final thing I've been sewing up um, I got sent the um, new Tilly and the Buttons pattern, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, it's the Erin dungarees pattern. So you can sew up um, full length dungarees, you can do a cropped pair of dungarees, or you can sew up the shorts pair of dungarees. I've seen so many gorgeous versions over on Instagram already. The pattern was sent to me for free. No obligation to share it, but I will mark it as an ad in the description below because I am going to talk about the pattern. And I've shared a little snippet over on Instagram, but I am going to share images of me wearing the shorts version as well. So I sewed this version up as a toile. I was hoping it would be a wearable toile. Um, and I used some fabric that I got from Backstitch as part of my um, blogger make for them. So you'll recognise this because I turned it into the I Am Sunshine jeans. And I had just enough left I had to piece a few bits together, particularly for the straps. Um, but I had just enough left to twirl the Erin dungarees. So I wanted to twirl the shorts version first. I think I was feeling inspired by the lovely sunshiny weather that we've had in London. Um, and then inside, um, they recommend using sort of a lighter weight fabric if you use a heavier weight fabric for the outside to line the bibs and then for the pockets. So I've used a mixture of fabrics because I knew that this was going to be a toile. So I had this gorgeous, I can't even remember where I got this from because I got it ages ago. Um, I think it's um, horses all over it. Yeah, I thought they were unicorns, but they're not. It's horses and then little flowers. It's really cute. So I used that for the, um, oh, I've got in a tangle now. So I used that for the back bib. I'm just making sure I've got this correct. I used that for the back bib. And then for the front bib, I didn't have enough of the horse fabric. So I used a mixture of fabrics on the inside. I used some of this floral fabric. It's a cotton lawn that I got from um, Fabric Godmother as part of the dream wardrobe boxes that they do. And then I had a bit of the horse fabric left. So that's just on either side. And then the pockets are, I think they go really nicely with the corduroy actually, um, the same cotton lawn floral fabric. I made a change to the pattern already. I much prefer dungarees to be finished with buckles. I just find it much easier for adjusting the length of them. So that's what I've done with these. I just attached um, uh, the, the belt buckle buttons that come with the belt buckles, the, not belt buckles, the dungaree buckle buttons that come with the buckles. Um, and then I've just threaded the strap through just here and then you can adjust it. Um, and then I went for the uh, version that has just got the two straps. You can do one where you've got a strap at the front, a strap at the back, and then you tie them on the shoulder. And that's a really cute version. I've seen some gorgeous versions of those. Um, I'm really pleased that I did do a twirl because I sewed up my usual Tilly and the Buttons size three, which is a 10, a UK 10. And actually on me, um, they come up quite wide. They are meant to be quite roomy and I've looked really carefully at all the models versions and there's a couple of videos where you can see the models moving in their dungarees but they are really, really wide on me and actually I've taken a picture of me where I'm holding how much room I've got near my waist and my hips and if you look at the finished garment measurements for the dungarees they are meant to be super wide in that area. Um, I'm not quite sure if I like the way that they look on me because they are quite wide I think next time I sew them up, I'm going to try them in a size, I'll probably go down to the smallest size that they do in them, um, because the bib is quite wide as well, if I hold it up. So I'm going to see what the bib looks like. What I might do is actually stick with a 10 for the bib, but then grade down to the smallest um, sort of size that they do in the dungarees for the hip area, because it is really wide. If I stand up now with these, you'll see sort of they stick out quite a lot here um they're super super wide i might pop them on so you can see what they look like actually they're a really lovely style i really like them the other thing to say is the way that you construct them um so you've got the front bib and then you've got the back bib and the way that you construct them because of the pockets the pockets are here you've got a seam line going across here which is fine because the pockets are fairly hidden um, but that does mean that on the back you've got a seam line going across basically where your bottom is and that is quite a wide part of the pattern so that's just something to consider because I feel like that's 
quite a wide area of the pattern and on me there's quite a lot of room in this area here so I don't think it helps really that I've got a lot of room here and you've got that seam line going across your bottom area too. I'm going to pause the video and pop this on just so I can show you how much room is actually in the dungarees when I've got them on. Okay, I've kept the t-shirt on and I've kept my um, tights on as well because it is a little bit chilly. But you'll be able to see if I stand up, this is what they look like. So this is the bib and then they come out really quite wide. So I could probably actually take in quite a wedge just to bring it in a little bit more because there's so much room on either side. So this is where my body is and then this is how much room I've got on either side. I don't know if it's really easy for you to see, but they are super, super wide. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of room on either side and I'm just not sure about that in this area. I feel like they swamp me ever so slightly. And then this is what the back looks like as well. There's just a lot of extra room for the dungarees. So I would say that um, I'm not a massive fan of doing twirls, but I am really pleased that I did do a twirl for the Erin dungarees, just so I could check the fit and see how they look on me. So let me get the pattern so I can talk you through the pattern details. So here's the pattern. It's the Erin Dungarees by Tilly and the Buttons. This is their first paper pattern that comes in their extended sizes. So it starts at their size one, which is a UK six, um, and then it goes up to a size 15, which is a UK 34. So for a UK six, it's a 30 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement and 33 inch hip measurement. And then for a UK 34, it's a 60 inch bust measurement, 53 inch waist measurement and 61 inch hip measurement. I sewed up a UK 10, so that is a 34 inch bust measurement. And I went for a 10 because of my bust. My bust is a 34 inch, but then that does, oh, and the waist actually, my waist is a 27 inch waist. So that roughly put me in the correct size banding because my waist is a 27 inch waist, sometimes 27 and a half inch. But then hip measurement for a UK 10 is a 37 inch and my hips are a 35 inch. So I could have sized down to a UK 8. I think what I'm going to do is stick with the um, bib measurement for a UK 10 and then grade down to a UK 6 for the hips because that's a 33 inch hip measurement. And I think that might give me less room where the hips are. I'll put pictures in of me wearing the dungarees so you can see what they look like. It'd be great to get your thoughts down below. And then I have got an image where I'm showing how much room I've got in that area as well. And I've got pictures of me um, turned around so you can see what the back looks like on me as well. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend soft woven fabrics like a low stretch knit, like French terry, Ponte Roma, needle cord, linen and blends, Sean Bray, soft twill, viscose rayon. If you're using a relatively thick fabric, so I was using quite a thick fabric like a needle cord, choose a light to medium weight cotton for the bib lining and pockets if you like. Otherwise, you can use your main fabric for the lining too. Um, so there are different variations. So you can do full length buttonhole version. You can do cropped leg shoulder tie version. So these are buttonhole versions. This is the buttonhole version. This is the shoulder tie version. And then you can also do a shorts version with shoulder tie. Um, I have changed it and I've added the buckles and I quite like that. And I think I'll do that with all of mine. I do quite like the um, shoulder version. I really love this version. It looks like it's in a linen or a viscose linen. I really love the look of that and I think that'd be a really cute summer version um, and I love it just with a plain t-shirt on underneath and this has got the shoulder tie version as well. I love it with the long sleeve t-shirt underneath as well and the short sleeve t-shirt. Um, it was a fairly straightforward sew, comes together quite quickly. I sewed this up in an evening um, and it took me a couple of hours so it's a really straightforward pattern. Um, I'm really glad I twirled it and I think I'm going to play around with the sizes and see if I prefer the look um, where I've sized down for the hip and waist area, so for the bottom half of the dungarees. Once I think I've got a fit that I'm really happy with, um, then I will. I think I'll probably sew up a full length version, but also a couple of versions of this, the shorts version, because I think that's going to be a really cute staple look for the summer. I think it'll be really cute. And I really love the pockets. The pockets are here and they're nice and deep, and I like that they're quite hidden, and they remind me a little bit of the pockets of the, um, I was going to say the Camden, but I don't think I mean the Camden, the, it's a Nina Lee pattern, I can't remember what the dress pattern is called, maybe it is the Camden, no, because the Camden's a pinafore, 
I can't remember what pattern I mean, but the pockets really remind me, I'll put a picture in once I've worked out what the pattern is, they really remind me of the Nina Lee Carnaby dress, that's what it's called, the Nina Lee Carnaby dress, because that's how their pockets are finished, it's really cute. I think I've seen somebody hack the dungarees to get rid of that seam line, um, and they just put patch pockets on, and I think that's a really nice way of finishing it, because then you can sort of um, tweak the fit around that area. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with the first version. I'm glad that I twirled it and I'm definitely going to plan some more. Um, but I would just say you might want to twirl it because of how much room is in that hip area. If that's something that you know that sometimes you have to sort of tweak the fit sometimes on patterns. Um, but a really lovely pattern from Tilly and the Buttons. That was the first pattern I wanted to talk to you about today. And then I've got another pattern that somebody recommended um, and it's a pattern I've seen so many gorgeous versions over on Instagram. And I asked, I can't remember who it was last week that I asked, but I shared this quilted fabric from the Fabric Revival. Absolutely beautiful. It's quite a lightweight quilted fabric. And I asked for pattern recommendations. So I've got a few quilted jackets. Um, I could use this for the Ilford jacket, but actually I want to try a different pattern. And the Hovea, I think it's called. Let me grab it. It's a Megan Nielsen pattern, the Hovea jacket and coat. Um, so it's this beautiful pattern. Kath from Made by Kath Craft. Uh, she's got a YouTube channel. I'm sure you follow her on Instagram. I'm sure you follow her on Instagram as well. She sewed up a beautiful version of this pattern. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to use this fabric to sew up. I think I'm going to sew up. If I've got enough, I wonder how much fabric you need actually. I uh, might not have enough. I was going to say I'm going to sew up this version because I think that'd be really lovely and snuggly. But actually, I really love this version too. So I'll see how much fabric I've got and if I can get this one out of it. Otherwise, I'll definitely be sewing up this version. It's a loose fit drop shoulder jacket and coat. It features multiple lengths, deep angled feature pockets. It's unlined. Oh, there's um, unlined full lining or quilted options and belt or tie closures. I really love the look of this little tie here. I think that's super cute. I think I'm gonna go for either of these versions. This pattern comes in sizes zero to 20. So for a zero, it's a 32 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement and 34 inch hip measurement. For a 20, it's a 46 inch bust, 38 inch waist and a 48 inch hip um, measurement. This is the paper pattern. If, if it's a PDF as well and they come in extended size ranging, I will put a link down below and I'll also put some information in about that now. In terms of fabrics, they recommend light to medium weight fabrics like a cotton, linen, chambray and, um, and blends. And they're recommended for the quilted versions B, D and F. It says to avoid thick fabrics or these versions can become bulky. Medium weight fabrics like a linen, cotton or medium to heavyweight coating fabric like a boiled, felted or suiting wool are recommended for views A, C and E. And A, C and E look like they've got um, like a facing. I don't know if you can see, but it looks like there's sort of like a, a kind of like a collar slash facing that comes all the way around the neckline and down the front. Whereas these B, D and F look like they're finished with bias binding, um, just like this version, which is absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to use this pattern to sew up a beautiful quilted coat for the spring summer for an extra layer of warmth when it's a little bit chilly. I think they're gonna go beautifully together. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I've just got some fabric that I wanted to share with you. So I've got two pieces of fabric from one fabric shop and then I've got a lovely box of fabric from Felicity Fabrics. So let's start with Felicity Fabrics. So here is my lovely box. Always comes in these beautiful boxes. Their packaging is so gorgeous. And then inside you get a little envelope. It's always got a little swatch of what your fabric is. And then they always write a little note as well, which is just gorgeous. Um, I've been given this fabric in return for a blog post. I do blog for Felicity Fabrics. They're an amazing company um, and so supportive to blog for. Um, they make it such a joy. And I've been thinking really carefully about what I need to make in my wardrobe. And I'm really enjoying trouser making at the moment. So the pattern that I've decided to go for for my next blog post is the... Um, Anna Allen Persephone pants. So they've sent me this gorgeous denim choco um, fabric. So I'm gonna use that to sew up some Persephone pants. Um, here it is, all um, wrapped up in tissue paper. 
Um, I really love that colour. I think it's going to go with lots of my blouses that I've been sewing up recently. And then I've also got some thread to go with that. So I'm really excited about sewing that up. They've still got some of that denim in stock, so I'll link it down below. And they've got it in different colours as well. It's beautiful quality. And I'm really excited about getting it sewn up. Um, this is the pattern. This is the pattern that I'm going to use. It's the Anna Allen Persephone pants. And I'm going to do the full length version because you can also sew up some shorts. But I'm going to do the full length version. I'm really excited about that project. I think that will be an Easter break project. And then I've got some fabric from a fabric shop. I'll put a picture in of what the fabric shop is called because I don't think I'll be able to pronounce it without saying it incorrectly. Um, but I've bought two pieces of fabric from this fabric shop. I got gorgeous little handwritten notes, which was really lovely. Just saying thank you, Liz, for shopping with them. Enjoy creating with these bright, fun fabrics. So I chose two fabrics um, that I bought from there. The first one is a jersey fabric and it's got cheetahs all over it. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It's like a jungle print. I love how bright and fun this fabric is. And I've got two and a half meters of this fabric. I'm going to turn it into some kind of jersey dress, possibly the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress because it's one of my favorite maxi jersey dresses. Or I might try and hack it into the um, pearl hack with the pearl cardigan from Tilly and the Buttons with the maxi dress as well. We'll see. Um, but I absolutely fell in love with the pops of colour from the animals that are all over it. And then the flowers that you can see and the leaves. I just think it's such a fun fabric. If I open it up, you'll be able to see the drape of the fabric as well. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm really excited about turning it into a jersey dress. So it's got a little bit of drape to it and a little bit of movement. It feels lovely and soft. And I think that's just gonna work perfectly for a spring dress, possibly summertime as well, if it's a little bit cooler. So that fabric was a printed jersey and I've got two and a half meters of that one. Um, I think they've still got some of this left, so I will link it down below. The next one, I bought all of the fabric that they had left of this fabric, and it's a cotton. It was described as a cotton Mexican fabric and it's got a Frida Kahlo print all over it. I just think it's really fun. And I'm going to turn this into a Deer and Doe Myosotis dress. And I think this is going to make a really gorgeous and really fun and colourful Frida Kahlo dress. It's quite a narrow fabric and I've got just under two metres. So I should be able to turn this into a Myosotis. And I think it'll just look beautiful with all those gorgeous colours. I think it's really, really fun fabric. Um, and I just think it's going to make a really stunning dress. I love all the bright colours and all those beautiful flowers all over it too. And it's such an unusual print that I'm really excited about turning that into a dress. And I love the myosotis. Um, I love sewing the myosotis with a cotton. This is quite a lightweight cotton poplin as well. So I think it'll be really lovely for the spring, summer. And actually I could layer it up with thick tights on as well if it's a little bit chilly and pop a polo neck underneath as well or a cardigan. Um, but yeah, I just thought that fabric was so fun. So I'm looking forward to turning that into a dress and I've got plans for that one as well. So that was all of my fabrics, all of the things that I've been sewing up. So let me just consult my notebook to see what else I wanted to talk to you about. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was three patterns that I'm going to be sewing up. Um, I'm not going to sew all of them for the Sew Frugal 22 challenge, but there's a couple of patterns I really would like to get sewn up for the Sew Frugal challenge. And the first one is the Peppermint Wrap Top. I'll link all these patterns down below. They're all free patterns. I absolutely love the wrap top. I love the shape of it. I love the style of it. And I've got some fabric in my stash that I'm going to turn into the In The Folds um, wrap top. So let me show you the fabric. It's this gorgeous heart print fabric that I got from Hayso's sister. I think it's a viscose linen. Um, I just love the rust colour. I love those scribbled hearts all over it. And I think that's going to look absolutely beautiful as that wrap top. The wrap top comes in sizes. Let me just find the information. It comes in their sizes A to J. So for an A, it's a high bust measurement of 28 inches, a bust measurement of 29 and 7 eighths of an inch, and a waist measurement of 24 inches. And then for a J, it's a high bust measurement of 49 and 5 eighths of an inch, 51 and 5 eighths of an inch bust measurement, and 45 and 5 eighths of an inch waist measurement. 
Um, it has got some ease to create a relaxed shape. So they do suggest that you use your high bust measurement to select your size and then your bust measurement to work out whether you need to do a small bust adjustment or a full bust adjustment. In terms of fabric recommendations for the wrap top, it's compatible with lightweight fabrics like a cotton, a linen, a viscose rayon, chambray or silk. Um, so I think this is going to make a really beautiful uh, peppermint wrap top. So that's the first thing that I'm hoping to get sewn up. And then the next one that I'm hoping to get sewn up, lots of people suggested this one. Um, it's a peppermint magazine pattern again, and it's the wide strap maxi. So it's this dress. It's got this gorgeous detail on the back with elastic, and it creates this beautiful shaping and these gathers. That's what really sold this pattern to me. So again, it's a free pattern from Peppermint Magazine, and it comes in their sizes A to J. So it's similar sizing for an A, it's a high bust of 28 inches, a bust of 30 inches, a waist of 24 inches, and a hip measurement of 33 inches. And then for a J, 49 and a half inch high bust measurement, 51 and a half inch bust measurement, 45 and a half inch waist measurement, and 54 and a half inch hip measurement. It's drafted for a B cup and a height of five foot seven. And then in terms of fabric recommendations for the maxi, I think they recommend like linens and lightweight fabrics. Let me just see what they say. In terms of fabric recommendations for the maxi, they recommend midweight woven fabrics like linen, cotton, hemp, or rayon. And I've just realized I've forgotten to pick up the fabric. It's staring at me from across the room. So I'm just gonna grab the fabric. I've got two fabrics, which is very ambitious of me, but I'm going to use this fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics, which is a viscose linen with these gorgeous orange stripes. I'm gonna use that to twirl it and hopefully it'll turn out as a wearable twirl because I just wanna check the fit across the bust. And also with that elastic in the back, I just wanna check that that sits where I want it to sit. So I'm gonna use this fabric to twirl it and then if it works, lots of suggestions to use this rhubarb and custard. I don't know if it was actually called rhubarb and custard, but it reminds me of those sweeties. Gingham fabric, um, which is, I think it was a brushed cotton and it's pink and yellow. I think that's gonna make a really cute maxi dress. So I wanna twirl it first and then I'm going to sew it up in this. And I think they'll both be great wearable maxi dresses for the spring summer. So that's the peppermint wide strap maxi dress. I just absolutely love that detail on the back. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I'll put a picture in of that back detail because that's what really sold the pattern to me. And then I'm not going to sew this up for So Frugal 22, but this is definitely a free pattern that I'm really looking forward to giving a try. And it is the wide leg pants. That's what they look like, quite straightforward. They don't look too dissimilar to the Persephone pants. Um, they come in sizes A to J. So for an A, it's a 24 inch waist and a 33 inch hip. Um, measurement and then for a J it's a 45 and a half inch waist measurement 54 and a half inch hip measurement so I'm looking forward to giving these a try it says that the wide leg pant is a high-waisted pant with fly button and button closure shaped waistband back darts and curved pockets they're drafted to be fitted around the waist and hips before dropping into a wide leg slightly cropped pant they're compatible with medium to heavy bottom weight fabrics with no stretch like a cotton twill, linen, corduroy or denim. So I'm really looking forward to giving those a try as well. I haven't stuck that PDF pattern together yet, but I have with the wrap top and I have with the maxi, so they're ready to go. So I've got quite a lot of plans for this week, um, what with sewing up my frugal um, sort of patterns and also my sew recreate the look, finishing those patterns as well. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to get some of it done. If I don't get it all done, it's not the end of the world, but I will be sharing it eventually. So the final thing to share is my final sewing plan, which I've talked about throughout this video. It's part of my Sew Recreate the Look um, sort of patterns that I'm hoping to get finished. And it's using this gorgeous rust um, corduroy fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. Um, and I'm going to be using this pattern because I want to sew up sort of like a, an oversized boxy jacket type thing. Um, so I've used this pattern before. I sewed it up using my quilted fabric from that was inspired by the rainbow fish. So I'm hoping, I think I'm probably going to do the cropped version um, because there's that cropped version or there's one that's slightly longer that goes beyond your hips and it looks like it stops just above the knee. I feel like I want to do this version and I want to wear it open like he's got it on on the front of the pattern. So it's a pattern by Friday Pattern Companies and it's the Ilford jacket. It comes in sizes extra small to 7X. So for an extra small, it's 32 to 33 inch chest measurement, 24 to 25 inch waist measurement, 34 to 35 inch hip measurement. 
and then for a 7x it's a 59 to 60 inch chest measurement 52 to 53 inch waist measurement and 62 to 63 inch hip measurement it's a versatile style that's modular design makes it simple yet impactful it features drop shoulders and comes with two sleeve options a placketed sleeve with cuff and an easy to sew boxy sleeve for a more relaxed vibe. So I'm going to go for the boxy sleeve. Um, it includes two lengths as well as a bunch of pocket templates that you can mix and match. So it's a fun skill building pattern that you will want to make and wear again and again. And it's also unisex, which is great. So it'll look great no matter your gender identity. In terms of fabric recommendations, let's have a look to get the booklet for their fabric recommendations. So in terms of fabric recommendations for the Ilford, it's designed for wovens and can be made from a wide variety of fabrics. For a boxier look, go for a lightweight canvas, linen, denim or corduroy, and it looks amazing in a drapey woven. When sewn up in a flannel, it's the perfect fall layering piece. The design lines of this pattern are simple enough that you have room to experiment with fabrics you may not have worked with before. So I'm looking forward to getting that cut out today and then hopefully sewn up across the week. So that was everything that I wanted to share with you today. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button because then you'll get notified of when I bring out my next videos. I always bring out a video on a Sunday and then I try and bring out a video on a Wednesday, although last week it came out on Monday because that was the um, day that I was given with the So Frugal 22 um, sort of schedule. So I will be bringing out a video next week. Um, thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.